As time proceeds forward, it often appears that one time, what may have been one person's magic is another individual's science. And today we look at the thought-provoking effect of fentanyl, often derived in plant compounds, or as a plant compound, I should say, derived from elements such as basil. Now, what we look at right here at the particular chart, or graph, I should say graphic, is the amazing effect that basically fentanyl has in reference to amyloid beta protein. And what we're looking at, let's just read the conclusion, and it may begin to make a little sense. And then we'll go do the full study itself. But the conclusion is important because you have to recognize not just that basil may have an impact in mitigating the progression of Alzheimer's disease and potentially something else called these half-dead neuronal zombie cells. But by starting with the conclusion and working way backwards, it may elucidate the mechanism of action and make it sink in a little bit better. So let us proceed as follows. Quote, we demonstrated the inhibition of microbiota sensitive mechanism. See, what ended up happening was they looked at short-chain fatty acids in the gut, and they found out what they did was, I mean, talk from here to here, was have this effect on free fatty acid receptor 2. And as a person ages, that communication of short-chain fatty acids from the gut, in reference to basically, again, free fatty acid receptor 2, begins to degradate. And so what they did is they said, hey, let's say get a plant compound, and they went to like 144,000 plant compounds. And they went, all right, let's look at this. And they found that the fentanyl has this amazing ability of basically elevating, again, free fatty acid receptor 2. If I keep looking at it here. But let's get right into the conclusion as follows. Quote, we demonstrated the inhibition of the microbiota sensing mechanism, free fatty acid receptor 2, otherwise known as FFAR2. Signaling exacerbates amyloid beta induced neuronal toxicity. Thus, we screened a large scale library of greater than 144,000 natural compounds and discovered fentanyl as a potent activator of this FFAR2 signaling. Fentanyl is a common natural compound abundantly present in edible plants like basil that showed a strong neuroprotective effect, which may ameliorate Alzheimer's disease pathology. And you can see right there the lysosomal degradation of the amyloid beta uh, in reference to the free fatty acid receptor 2 to proceed. Mechanist mechanistically, fentanyl improved amyloid beta clearance by increasing lysosomal activities which in turn reduced cellular senescence in neuronal cells. Overall, our results demonstrate the inhibition of FFAR2 signaling exacerbates amyloid beta-induced neurotoxicity, while its activation by fentanyl reduces, reduces, take that back, reverses the abnormalities and suggests the potential for free fatty acid receptor 2 activators like fentanyl that can prevent Alzheimer's disease progression. Again, that's from the conclusion that's there, and let's get right into the full study, not the full study, at least the public release study. And then towards the end, remember this is an animal model, so it has not this research has not been conducted in people as of yet, but everyone's always interested in the dosaging. And we'll look at the dosaging uh, represented in the animal model, even though that may not translate effectively to humans, but still just the same. We'll get that towards the end, the full study. But now the public release. Natural compound in basil may protect against Alzheimer's disease pathology. Fentanyl, a natural compound abundant in some plants, including basil, can help protect the brain against Alzheimer's disease pathology, a clinical, preclinical study suggests. The team discovered a sensing mechanism associated with the gut microbiome and explains how fentanyl reduces neurotoxicity in the Alzheimer's brain. Now we head towards the back study. Emerging, a back study, or I should say back story. Emerging evidence indicates that short-chain fatty acids metabolites produced by beneficial gut bacteria and the primary source of nutrition for your cells in your colon contribute to brain health. The abundance of short-chain fatty acids is often reduced in older patients with mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease, the most common form of dementia. However, how this decline in short-chain fatty acids contributes to Alzheimer's disease 
progression remains largely unknown. Gut-derived, short-chain fatty acids that travel through the blood to the brain can bind and activate, here we go, the FFAR2, the free fatty acid receptor 2, a cell signaling molecule expressed on brain cells called neurons. Quote, our study is the first to discover that, that stimulation of the FFAR2 sensing mechanism by these micro, microbial, microbial, microbial metabolites, SCFAs, can be beneficial in protecting brain cells against toxic accumulation of amyloid beta protein associated with Alzheimer's disease. Recall the first graphic we looked at and the lysosomal degradation of those amyloid beta proteins by that FFAR2 to proceed. The research team set out to uncover the previously unknown function of this FFAR2 and to reiterate free fatty acid receptor 2 in the brain. The researchers first showed that inhibiting, so what they want to do first by inhibiting, they mean break it, block it, whatever they mean. Let's see what happens. Let's take FFRA2 out of the picture and just see what occurs. Receptor, thus blocking its ability to sense short chain fatty acids in the environment outside the neuronal cell and transmit signaling inside the cell, contributes to the abnormal buildup of the amyloid beta protein causing neurotoxicity linked to Alzheimer's disease. So in the inverse, first by blocking uh, this FFAR2, they could see exactly what happens. And what happened was amyloid beta uh, protein began to accumulate to proceed. They demonstrated that Fenchel significantly reduced excess amyloid beta accumulation and death of neurons by stimulating the FFAR2 signaling the microbiome sensing mechanism. When the researchers more closely examined how fentanyl modulates alpha amyloid beta induced neurotoxicity, they found that the compound decreased senescent neuronal cells, also known as zombie cells, commonly found in brains, it sounds so zombie-like as you go, we go on, with Alzheimer's disease pathology. Zombie cells stop replicating and die a slow death. According to the researcher, they build up in diseased and aging organs, create a damaging inflammatory environment, and send stress or death signals to neighboring healthy cells, which eventually also change into harmful zombie cells or die. The scenario seems appropriate because it's like the zombie cells continue to make more zombie cells, so on and so forth. Half alive, half not. To proceed, Fenchel actually affects the two related mechanisms of senescence and proteolysis, uh, pro, pro, proteolysis, according to the researcher, proteolysis, proteolysis, of the intriguing preclinical study finding. Quote, it reduces the formation of half-dead zombie neuronal cells and also increases the degradation, degradation of non-functioning functioning amyloid beta proteins so that the amyloid protein is cleared from the brain much faster. So henceforth, that's what you have. So the short chain fatty acid mechanism is normally uh, abundant in healthy individuals is signaling to the FFAR2. Uh, basically, again, the uh, free fatty acid receptor 2. I have to keep looking at it because I keep on passing by that free fatty acid receptor 2. It just seems too easy for me. So basically, FFAR2 begins to decline. So the short chain fatty acid can't seem to do that, get that communication there. The, here comes enter Ventrol, basically a plant compound derived from basil and other plants as well. Ventrol sends a reestablish that communication, that wiring or whatever you want to call it, that internet connection, and henceforth reactivates the clearance of the amyloid beta proteins. So basically it helps mitigate the progression potentially, again, human studies have to be conducted, of the progression of Alzheimer's disease. So to proceed as follows, here we have it. That was the animal model. Again, always caveat that. What is a dosage for animals may not be appropriate for what is with humans due to different metabolisms, enzyme systems, so on and so forth. But there you have it. And it's 80 milligrams a kilogram body weight, uh, oral gavage 
for about three months. Beautiful, simple, basic. It really makes you wonder, again, a lot of either instinctively or however, a lot of the dietary patterns and spices and so on and so forth that preceded us by our ancestors seem to have this quite incredible, uh, how would you say, advantageous or supportive effect for our biology today. Whether it was basically our biology evolved with these spices or these spices were incorporated through observation to see how we performed better and we just felt better overall. Again, as I said, at one time, one individual's magic, maybe another individual's science, without any doubt. Again, gratitude to the researchers. As always, I want to make sure I thank them towards the end. Again, this was a previously an unknown action of the free fatty acid receptor 2 that we're looking at prior FFAR2. So they've made a new discovery, not just in basically what uh, basil may do, but also the incorporation of how the gut microbiome, the short chain fatty acids, basically help keep our brain healthy. And that is incredible on its own. So gratitude to them. Humble for all you watching. And I look forward to seeing you all once again next week. Catch you all next time. Bye.